Tyler, AKA Thrifts and Tangles. Today I wanted to sit down and share some ways you can have a more sustainable wedding. I got married in June of 2022 <laughs> and I just wanted to have a sustainable, eco-friendly wedding in as many ways as possible because it's impossible to have everything like 100% sustainable, but there are little things you can do to achieve your eco-friendly goals, right? So the wedding industry is very wasteful. So anything you do does make a huge impact. So I hope these tips are helpful. These are some things we did for our wedding. And if you want to check out my wedding video, I'll put it up here. All right, let's dive into the ways you can have a more sustainable wedding. The first way is instead of doing physical cards, consider doing e-cards. They have some really great companies out there like Paperless Post and Green Envelope. They will make it so you can just communicate with your guest virtually. So you don't need to have a physical save the date. You don't have to have a physical invite. All of it can be sent to your guest through their inbox. One thing I found is that like some guests need to be reminded. Like I sent a lot of texts like, by the way, I emailed you, you know, make sure you check this out. I sent some like emails, I think the two days, like a week before and two days before and the day of the wedding, just to remind people like this is where the venue is, this is the attire, this is the main contact, like just important information. So overly communicating with guests is helpful. Um, especially if they don't have a physical invite to take with them. So a lot of my family traveled to LA to attend our wedding. So it was good to like keep reminding them this information because they didn't have a physical card to just bring with them and like check out where the venue address was. So I did keep sending emails constantly. So maybe keep that in mind because it's easy to maybe send like, oh, here's my digital invitation. I don't know, three months before the wedding, but then that shouldn't be the only communication because people might lose it in their emails. I know my emails go missing all the time. So just try to like overly communicate too. Um, I think that'll be helpful for your guests. The second thing is we had our caterer bring dispensers of water, lemonade, and iced tea. And I asked the caterers, instead of having plastic or paper cups, if I could bring my own aluminum cups. And they said, yeah, that's fine. So. I was able to bring, I think the brand was Ball Aluminum. I'll put a picture of them right here. But I was able to have aluminum cups for my guests to write their names on so they could reuse it throughout the night. And it was able to be recycled after. And it was funny because people actually really liked these cups. Like they were a conversation starter, which I had no idea that would be such a hit at the wedding. Like they were like aluminum solo cups kind of. <laughs> so that was really nice that um, the guests appreciated that little detail. Another way you can be sustainable at the wedding is the morning of, you will need toiletries, right? You wanna get ready the day of, you might get ready at your venue, you might just need an emergency bag at your wedding, like you might need certain things. If you opt for sustainable toiletries, that is a great way to eliminate some waste. So I personally love Plain Products. They are actually the sponsor of this video. They have full size bottles and then they also have like travel size bottles. So I ended up taking both of these items to my wedding. I took a bottle of their body lotion. This is actually like their new packaging. <laughs> so back when I got married, they had like a different packaging, but I really like how minimal their new design is, but their products come in aluminum bottles so they can be recycled. They have a whole program where you can send back their bottles and order refills. It's so convenient, but their products are also toxin-free and cruelty-free, and I freaking love them. So for the wedding, having an emergency bag of toiletries is essential. There are so many things that you'll need that, like hair ties, hand sanitizer, lotion, you might need hairspray, you might need like nipple covers. Like there's so many random things that you might need the day of the wedding. So I'll put like a list of emergency items that were helpful for me and I hope they're helpful for you. But going for a sustainable like aluminum option like plain products is not a bad idea. Okay, another way to be more sustainable is to offer plated meals. So a lot of people will opt for buffet options, but the problem with the buffet is that sometimes the food gets wasted. Like people put too much food on their plate and don't eat it, right? Like they are, if everything looks good at your wedding, they're just gonna be like, I wanna try that, I wanna try that, I wanna try that. And then some food gets wasted that way. But then after the fact, I feel like the buffet just, they make more food than is needed. So I think food gets wasted that way as well. Versus if you do plate it, Sorry, I have like my phone right here with my notes. If you do plate it, people are given like exact portions. If there are anything left over, 
One thing that you can do, which is what my caterer allowed us to do, is that we were able to take any leftover food home. So even though we did a plated option, there was some food that was extra. Um, and I think they just made extra food just in case it was needed. I don't know how it works. I don't know. But we were able to take it home and we ate all that food for like a week. So that was really nice. So if you can opt for a plated option, usually buffets are a little cheaper. So even if you do buffet style, ask your caterer, can I take any leftover food home and can you box it up for me? Because sometimes they'll say, yeah, that's fine. So that's a really great way to make sure food doesn't get wasted. But I think doing plate it just makes sure it makes it so people eat all the food on their plate and don't get like so greedy where they're like, oh, I want that. I want that. I want that. And the next thing you know, their food's cold and they don't eat it. And then it just gets taken to the back and thrown out. Okay. The next thing is to rent your florals. So you can rent real florals. Um, I'm sure there's some places like if you look up local floral rental companies, they'll let you do that. Some people will have it where a bride from a wedding from the day before will say, hey, do you want to buy my florals from me? And you could pick it up from the bride from the day before and use their florals at your wedding. So that's a way to save money and to like reuse flowers. But you can also do, they have like, I can't think of what they're called, silk, silk flowers that you can rent. So there's a company that I really like called Something Borrowed Blooms. And I ended up using their florals for our wedding. And they just literally shipped me everything. I think two days before I was able to use the florals at the wedding. The setup was not super involved because they weren't real. So it was like super easy to just set it up. I didn't have to be so delicate with them. And then after I shipped them back so that they could be reused for another wedding. So there are a few floral companies like that that have silk rentals and they're a lot cheaper than buying like real flowers. And of course they last longer because real flowers will die in like a week or two. So I have a blog post. I'll put it in the description box down below and I'll also put it up here, but definitely check them out because floral rentals, the flowers are beautiful and it'll save you money. And it's just better to be able to reuse flowers. Like instead of just having a one-time use of flowers and then probably throwing them away, which I feel like a lot of places do, unfortunately. Okay, the next thing is have your ceremony and reception at the same place if possible. If you can't do that, have it like very close by, but having it so people don't have to travel really far in between the ceremony and reception is just a great way to reduce the carbon footprint because if people have to go to one location and then drive to a whole nother location, that's just, <laughs> that's a lot on the guests to have to do, um, especially if they're not familiar with the area, but then also it's just easier to have it in one spot. And I feel like Sometimes it's cheaper. Sometimes they'll do a bundle deal. I don't know if that's all the way true. Fact check me on that. But just having it in one place, just make sure that you don't have to like have unnecessarily tr unnecessary travel in between. The next way to be more sustainable is to just have a smaller ceremony. So for my wedding, we had 40 guests total. And it was nice because it was just small. It was intimate. But also we didn't have to create as much waste. We didn't have to pay for as many people to eat. We didn't have to decorate as many seats. Like there was, there was just a lot less waste to create because there was less people. So if you can cut your guest list, that'll save you money and it'll make it so you don't create so much waste per guest. Cause then like favors and stuff like that can get wasteful. Too. The next way to be sustainable is to thrift as many items as you can. I thrifted so many decor pieces for the wedding. I actually did a video of everything I thrifted for the wedding if you want to watch it. But you can thrift like your bridesmaids dresses. You can thrift centerpieces. You can thrift favorite ideas. Like you can thrift florals. You can thrift so many things for the wedding. And buying something secondhand versus new is always better. I personally got my wedding dress on Facebook Marketplace for $400 and it was the most beautiful dress in my opinion. So if you can thrift an item, try to do that. That's a great way to make sure the item doesn't end up in landfill, the item gets reused and you're just bringing a new life to that piece and you're saving a lot of money by thrifting. So you can thrift online. There's a ton of places where you can get wedding dresses online um, secondhand or decor secondhand. I'll put it in the description box down below. I think I have a blog post on that. But then you can also thrift in person too. Like I literally found so many florals at my local savers 
it was like someone just donated their whole wedding, which was so convenient. Okay, the next thing is tuxedo rentals. That of course is sustainable because you're not buying anything new. You're going to like, I don't know, fry your tux or something, getting a tux, wearing it, giving it back for it to be reused. So that's an option, but you can also rent bridesmaids dresses as well. I feel like that's not as commonly known. Um, there's some sites like Newly and Rent the Runway where you can rent bridesmaids dresses. Um, and some of the, depending on where you look, some places that offer bridal or bridesmaids clothing, they sometimes will have a rental option as well. So if you're like shopping for bridesmaids dresses in person, maybe ask your local boutique, do you have rentals? Cause sometimes they do, which is very surprising. So if you're hoping to receive like ethical gifts or sustainable gifts, there is a sustainable ethical registry called Everlastly, where they give every single item an Evergrade rating that says, you know, the packaging is sustainable. This was made sustainably this way. And they rate every item on the site so that you can see, you and your guests can see, okay, this is a very sustainable item, or maybe this item is not so sustainable. So it's a really good way for you to help guests shop your value. So Everlastly is what we use for our registry. In addition to things like Zola and The Knot, I had some people who know that I'm into sustainability and they were like, we just wanna make sure the wedding gift we give you is in alignment with your value. So I sent them that registry specifically and it just made it so easy. They are a female owned company and they were still a pretty small company and they're just kind of growing. Like they were a startup not too long ago. I think they still are considered a startup, but it just makes it really easy for couples to be able to shop their values and share their values with their guests. And they have some really good items on there. So check them out. Speaking of registries, you can also opt for a charity registry. So if you don't want any gifts and you want people to donate to a charity instead, that is definitely an option. Okay, the next thing is to do ethical wedding rings or ethical engagement rings. So my ring is from a company called Andrea Benelli. She is a small female owned business based out of Las Vegas, but all of her rings are ethically sourced. I'll put more details in the description box down below, but I really, really love my ring and it's a black owned business as well. There are some other ring sites out there too that are ethical, but like, we all know about blood diamonds and the struggle with that. So if you cannot contribute to that industry, don't. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Okay, so then for wedding favors, if you could do something consumable, that is a great way to make sure the item does not get wasted, does get thrown out. There's so many like beer cozies and like random things that sometimes I see personally at the thrift store where I'm like, this was for a wedding and someone didn't want it. And so they gave it to the thrift store. So if you don't want your wedding favor to end up in the thrift store, consider giving something consumable that people can use, eat, think like, I don't know, even like bar soaps, you can do lotions, you can do candles. Although I've learned recently, some people don't like candles and some people are specific about the scents of candles, but I think candles are still a pretty good favor. You can do plants. I'm kind of iffy about plants cause I'm like not everyone is responsible enough to care for a plant. So that plant might die. So then I'm like, did I just waste my money buying a favor that's a plant that someone's gonna kill in like a week from now? I don't know if that's an actual concern or that's like a me concern. I don't know. The thing that we ended up giving as a favor is we had a caricature artist draw pictures of our guests. And I feel like that's like a, a timeless keepsake that someone will keep forever. So if you can kind of think of things that people will either use up right away or things that people will keep for a long time, just think to yourself, will this favor end up at the thrift store? <laughs> Is there a possibility it will? If yes, then maybe save your money and opt for a different favor. And some people don't even do favors anymore, so that's an option too. The last thing is possibly find a venue that is like outdoors mainly or outdoors and indoors because if it's outdoors, you don't need to utilize a lot of lights. You don't need a lot of resources to make sure a wedding goes on, which is really nice. But then also, if you can find a venue that's pretty decorated on its own, like most outdoor like garden venues are pretty on its own, so you don't need to bring in a whole bunch of your own decor. So if you can find a place like that, that is a great way to, again, save yourself some money, but also to not be wasteful. Because a lot of the stuff that you get for a wedding, it's very wedding specific and may not be used again. So it's like, that's less stuff that you have to have 
in storage or like less things that you have to worry about trying to sell after the fact. So yeah, I think that's everything I have for sustainable wedding tips. Let me know if you have any tips in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.